What we got is a 2015 Dodge Ram 2500 series that we're doing a 48 swap on. The motor's making about 500 horsepower. It's got a second gen turbo on it with a 67 millimeter turbo. And uh, we're gonna lift the truck up and show you a few things that we did to the transmission internally. Um, this particular customer decided to go automatic. Um, most of the swaps that we do are reverse manual and reverse manual trans brake. But this customer wanted an automatic shift, so we're going to uh, accommodate for him. The internal parts of the 48 that uh, is out in the shop, I got only a few pieces here, but we'll, we'll show you what the rundown is. We did replace all three shafts. The, uh, the billet input shaft and hub is assembly, the billet intermediate shaft, which is 300M, and the 29 spline billet output shaft. All three of those products are from TCS. You have to mill down the input of the transfer case in order for the 29 spline to fit. The, the 48s came with the smaller output, and so you have to switch to the larger output. Um, some of the other parts that we use on the inside, we've really had great luck with these Raybestos GPZ clutches. Um, when, when you read their website they say that they're more for towing and I've talked to these guys on the phone they're like yeah put everything you can to it and they've really worked great I use all these clutches and our gas motors and our diesel motors transmissions I should say um, so it has a complete set of GPZ's choline steels we use solid bands so the band is actually out of a 727 but it does fit in a 48 um, and some of the other pieces that are in there those were the soft parts some of the hard parts um, and we're gonna get to the good stuff because this is stuff that we make here. The, the first one that I really like is our billet servo. It's a dual ring billet servo. Now this is designed off the Chrysler's 727 1962 to 1970 servo. It fits in all the RHs and RE's. So it don't matter if you have a 46, 47, or 48, this will fit in there. And it is in my professional opinion that this is the best servo in the world. Even if it wasn't made from billet, if you just had the factory 68 or 62 to 70 servo with the dual springs, that's way better than making this smaller and putting the sleeve in the case because that's going to give you a, a, an overlap issue. Now you can probably tweak the transmission to, to not it be so bad, but if you had an overlap issue and you just put this servo in and nothing else, that would fix it. If you took the competitor's red servo with, with the smaller um, top land, that would not fix an overlap issue. It would make it worse. So our billet servo is a great piece. They're a buck fifty. Uh, another thing that I'm really proud of is our, our, our billet low reverse servos for the 46. No, I'm sorry, for the 47 and 48. These will work in gas and V10s. Okay, it's the same servo. It's a one-piece design. It's not steel, it's built aluminum, and the, the servo, uh, we get rid of the snap ring that's down here so there's no leakage when you go through that. It comes with a, a real strong uh, return spring which allows for a nice clean one-two shift. And the one thing where everybody fails to do is the spring retainer. A lot of you guys, when you get your shift kits, they'll give you the spring, but they don't give you the spring retainer. Our billet low reverse kit includes all three pieces for $110. The servo, the spring, and the retainer. I can't sell just the retainer because it only fits our spring. Yeah, I made it that way. Uh, other pieces in that transmission uh, for Jim's tranny that's out there. Uh, we use um, our billet spacers. Our, our, actually, it's the rear clutch. It's about 50 thousandths taller than stock, and it takes up that slop in between the Bellevue spring and the piston. A lot of times people have problems where you can lift the clutch drum up, and it's just too sloppy. And what happens, then the piston has too much travel. It'll blow past that Bellevue spring. The seals pop out, then you lose forward motion. So this was a really good upgrade that we did to Jim's transmission. We use a billet accumulator, which is really a no-brainer. This is nothing special about this one. Everybody makes the billet accumulator. They're all pretty much the same. Um, the last product I'm going to show you is our 5-inch deep pan. 
this deep pan holds an extra, let's see, on a 727, it's two and a quarter gal uh, gallons more. On an overdrive, I believe it's a gallon and a half more. It's five inches. The aluminum is American-made aluminum. These are poured in a foundry in Chicago. Then they come to our shop in the, rare ca uh, the raw castings, and the, the machine work is done here. So it's a, it's a product that everything is made in the United States. Um, I even put a little logo on the inside that says Made in the USA. We, the one great thing about this pan that compares to all the other pans out there, if you ever get any brackets, let's say like the PPP shifter bracket or a Hearst shifter bracket, and you go to put the bracket on there with a lot of most pans, they use those really small Allen head screws and they don't fit and then the, you have issues, you have to mill the brackets and everything. With this pan, you don't have to do none of that. It is, it, the clearance is real nice. So you can use this on 48s and 47s and you can also use this on 727s if you got a truck. You got a car, of course, it's too deep. So that was a piece that we put on gyms. And we also have bolts or a stud kit and we use a Mopar drain plug with the rubber seal on it. The last piece is our built filter extension uh, with an O-ring to lower the filter. This one is for a 727 with a three-inch pan or a 4748 with a uh, with this five-inch pan. Now, if you have my billet valve body, which is a lot skinnier than the factory valve body, then we made this uh, filter extension for that. So those are the parts that are inside the 48 that we're doing the feature on. Uh, we got a system from Firepunk, which is really a really neat system. Uh, they they call it the ant eater and a porcupine. Uh, they're not nicknames, and uh, it's kind of kind of neat stuff. I always thought if I ever come out with a product and want to give it a funny name, I was going to call it the pelican. So, but anyways, what we got here, uh, the ant eater. These are they're they're two different things. We'll start with that. Um, it's a standalone computer that you put on the vehicle when you're doing a 48 swap. You take the 68 out and putting a 48 in, um, you get this controller and it comes with a harness that plugs into the transmission and then you have a, a control module that goes on the dashboard. And with this you have three different functions uh, as far as tuning the transmission. You could turn the lock up on, let's say in second gear, it can come on, or third or fourth or however you want. And it also has got a manual mode. This particular one is the Pro one which allows the shifter that's on the thumb actuated shifter uh, to shift it manually. So it's really a nice option. This is our first one that we're putting in um, and we're gonna install it today. In the next video, we're gonna, we're gonna go on a test drive. We're gonna show you how good it works. We're not gonna do the installation because you can go to the manufacturer's website and they give a pretty detailed description and how it's installed. So I I'm not gonna do that in this video. But um, I was very impressed with this with this product. Uh, it's made in America. Um, everything when, when I gave the original inspection was was the workmanship is is really nice. So this harness here is for what they call the anteater. That's the name of the product, which is a standalone computer. Um, you also need what's called a porcupine. That's what this wiring harness is. And what this does is it plugs into the 68 uh, wiring harness and then this converts the signals from the transmission to the anteater that allows the backup camera to work, uh, the reverse lights to work, uh, the neutral switch, uh, cruise control, the four wheel drive option, shift on a fly thing. Um, so when you, do, when you do that, you need this. Now, I, I will let you know, if you go to a reverse manual valve body or a trans brake in your swap, none of this is needed. And it's only for automatic shift. So if you want an automatic shift, then check these guys out. They really make, I, I really was impressed with, with the quality and this product. And I'm sure it'll work good. I've watched many videos myself of how they put it in. Uh, you do have to have a laptop. Uh, you plug in the wire and it, it plugs into here and you do have to tune it and then you can adjust it that way too. So it, it really for for automatic shift stuff. This this really is, is really good stuff, and I and I really like it. I'm sure I'm going to like it a lot more 
once it's in the truck it's going so the next video again this will be in the truck we'll be test driving it we'll show you how good it works